Hello, I'm Leila McKinnon. Welcome to A Current Affair. It's great to be with you. First, it was a crime that sent a chill down the spine of every parent. The murder of beautiful little Ebony Simpson broke our hearts and shattered the lives of her mum and dad. Now it's been revealed Ebony's killer is being rewarded by the prison system. He stole my daughter and I, I'm not having it. I want what was set down. Lock him up, throw away the key. Tonight, the new perks for one of our most evil prisoners. Garforth is a child killer. We don't give privileges to child killers. A mother's outrage at the system allowing it. He needs a plate of beans kicked under the door of that cell and a glass of water every day and that's all he needs. And the prisoner welfare advocate who says the family needs to get over it. It's a shame for the family to still hold on such anger towards uh, the, the man after such a long period of uh, 23 years. A parent has no greater fear than their child disappearing. The faces of those that do haunt us. Years before William Tyrrell and Daniel Morecambe, a nation held its breath for Ebony Simpson. Ebony, if you're out there, darling, and if you can get home, get home or give us a ring. <sighs> Ebony was just nine years old, walking home from the school bus drop-off in sight of her house. But waiting on that same quiet road was Andrew Peter Garfield. He abducted her, raped her, then bound her arms and legs and threw her into a dam. Police have found the body of missing nine-year-old schoolgirl Ebony Simpson. It quickly emerged that Garforth was so demented he was helping in the search, even though he knew where her body was. The young girl walked past and I grabbed her and put her in the boot, put her in the car and drove away. He confessed to the murder, but never showed even an ounce of remorse. She pleaded with me for me to let her go. At the time, there were calls to bring back the death penalty. Angry locals in the town of Bargo, just outside of Sydney, wanted to lynch him themselves. Well, will tie his arms and legs and see how he goes. Come on, get him in now. The judge found there should be no mercy, sentencing him to life behind bars never to be released. But 23 years later, Ebony Simpson's mother, Christine, contacted A Current Affair after being informed that prison life for Andrew Garforth is about to get a whole lot better. I got a phone call from the victim's register to tell me his classification had been changed to a B. It means he's been downgraded from maximum security to a medium security prisoner. Instead of getting a solitary hour out of his cell each day, Garforth can now get four hours of daily sunshine. He can also apply for further freedoms like sandwich toasters in his cell, as well as courses in woodworking. He can even get a job in the prison garden or laundry. He's a pedophile, he's a child murderer. Look back over his record, it'll horrify you. He came onto our property, he joined the search. We fed him. I mean, he's a horrible man. Why do you think he, he needs to be in doing a course? What? He didn't do a course when he was out. Christine Simpson eventually left that country town and moved to another one, here in the tiny village of Captain's Flat, just outside of Canberra. She bought this art gallery and hoped that it would be a way of trying to rebuild her life. No matter how many years go by, she will never forget what Andrew Garforth took from her that day. But her great fear is that the justice system is forgetting what he's done. I don't want to be sitting here with you. I really don't. I'm tired. I'm sad. I just want to whatever life I got left, get on with it, in it with a bit of peace. What does it do to your peace knowing that he's getting extra privileges? It just turns it all back to where it was, turns it upside down. 
And it makes me absolutely ashamed of this system that they can't see that. Classification downgrades are used by corrective services to reward good behaviour, especially for prisoners who will never be released. I really don't care. And I am Ebony's mother, and it is up to me, not up to someone sitting on a board. I'm the one who lives with this every day. He stole my daughter, and I, I'm not having it. I'm not having him doing anything but thinking about what he did. I have to think about it every day, and so should he. I got a life sentence, and so did he. When you lose a young, innocent child, a little girl, under the circumstances that they lost Ebony, I can perfectly understand why they would be so upset and outraged. Howard Brown is from the Victims of Crime Assistance League. His group monitors prisoner classification changes, particularly the worst of the worst. Under normal circumstances, a change in classification is part of the reintegration back into the community. But in a case like Garforth, uh, and people like Ivan Malat, for example, it's a management tool. Serial killer Ivan Malat was rewarded for good behaviour with a TV and sandwich toaster, but a public outcry saw the privileges revoked. To you it might be just a toaster, but to us it's a massive change, you know, and, and it hurts, you know, it damn well hurts. It's a good thing, it's a good thing for him and a good thing for the community, it's a cheaper way of doing it. Brett Collins served 10 years in jail for armed robbery and now lobbies for improved prisoner welfare through his Justice Action Group. He once let notorious pedophile Dennis Ferguson move in with him and his two children after he was run out of towns across Australia. Oh, who could not see him as a victim? How could you have a thousand people chasing one individual? So it really should come as no surprise what his views are on Andrew Garfield. It's absolutely essential that uh, Corrective Services does focus on moving him into a, a, a lighthouse, less a security place. It's to their benefit, everyone's benefit, um, that he can move on and, um, and, uh, and get some measure of freedom and improvement. What's, what's this great thing that he needs to be, have a better life? You know, go and, go and sit at the grave and see if Ebony's got a better life. She can't do a course. She's six foot under the ground. Christine Simpson says she always feared as the years rolled by, attitudes would soften on Garforth's sentence. It's changing and I knew this would happen and I've always been aware of it and that's why I've always kept a really good eye on him and what he was up to and his classifications and everything else because I knew some bright spark had come along. It's a really sad thing to, to have lost their child, but um, to link it to the man, to the offender, is a shame. They should uh, clearly, at some stage, uh, move on with their lives and, and let him move on with his life as well. Look, what planet is this bloke on? He's obviously not lost a child like the Simpsons have. Radio broadcaster Chris Smith was in court for Andrew Garforth's sentence and listened as Christine's former husband, Peter, faced the waiting media. At Ebony Simpson, uh, got the death sentence, the Simpson family's got the life sentence, and Garforth's got bed and breakfast. The Simpsons have been right all the way through this. Although they had the judge who said he should never, ever be released, they got that from the judge. They always knew the system would let them down, and they have been proven right. For Christine Simpson, the pain of losing Ebony is as raw today as it was 23 years ago. I go to bed thinking about it 90% of the time and I wake up thinking about it, you know. I still wake up crying in the night about it and you know, it wakes me up crying. She says no parent ever really recovers from losing a child, especially one taken by a murderer who's never even bothered trying to apologise. I gave birth to that girl, I breastfed her, I spent more time with her than anyone on this earth and he took her away from me. Garforth has shown no remorse through this whole process and we should show no remorse. We shouldn't be giving him toasters, we shouldn't be making sure that he's entertained and doing woodworking processes during the day. Get out of here. There's one wish Christine Simpson has that she knows can never be granted. In its place, all she's asking for is one simple thing. Oh, I can't bring her back to life. I want justice. I want what was set down. Lock him up, throw away the key. I want you to take him from a B, put him back to an A, and no courses. I don't want him doing any courses. It's unacceptable. 
And Corrective Services New South Wales says the classification change was made on the advice of the Serious Offenders Review Council. That full statement is on our website. Hello, I'm Leila McKinnon. Welcome to A Current Affair. Great to be with you. Those stories soon, but first a win for the family of murdered schoolgirl Ebony Simpson. Last night we exclusively revealed Ebony's killer, Andrew Peter Garforth, was being rewarded by the prison system with access to extra privileges. Reporter Dan Nolan broke the story and joins me now. Dan, there's been a major breakthrough. That's right, Leila. Tonight we can report Garforth's reclassification has been overturned after outrage from Ebony's mum, Christine, on a current affair. Here's a quick reminder of what she said last night. I really don't care. And I am Ebony's mother. And it is up to me, not up to someone sitting on a board. I'm the one who lives with this every day. He stole my daughter and I, I'm not having it. I'm not having him doing anything but thinking about what he did. I have to think about it every day and so should he. I got a life sentence and so did he. Today, the New South Wales Corrections Minister, David Elliott, announced Garforth will not have his prisoner status reclassified and has instructed the Serious Offenders Review Council to reverse its decision. So long as I draw breath, I'm going to make sure that the death of Ebony Simpson is not forgotten. Uh, today, I'll be drafting a letter of apology to Mrs Simpson, letting her know that neither the memory of her lovely daughter nor her treatment will be forgotten. He does not deserve uh, any type of special attention. He certainly doesn't deserve any type of rehabilitation. And I'm not going to waste taxpayers' money seeing him given employment opportunities. I spoke with Christine today to tell her the news and she was overjoyed that decision was changed so quickly. She's also overwhelmed with the response she's received since our story went to air. She said it's just so pleasing to know that so many Australians still care about what happened to Ebony and were just as outraged as she was at Garforth's new prison perks. The Minister says all those privileges are now gone and he won't be getting them back ever again. Layla? It's good to know our viewers have brought some small comfort to Christine. Absolutely. Thanks for that, Dan.